So here is a closer look of the two holes for the shift rods. As you can see, there is one journal bushing here and there is no bushing here. This is basically metal. So the Artronic, the shift rod, for one of these shift rods, it was basically metal on metal, which is insane, I think. And there's a journal bushing here. So usually in the past, shops have, what they've done is they machined out this hole and this hole here and installed, not this bush, but this. They had to machine out this and install, press fit these slider ball bearings here because these are uh, what was in the male transmission cases here. So what that's what shops had to do. However, that took a lot of time as well as in addition to this housing unit that they had to take, take off. off. They basically, they also had to take off this middle housing over here because there is a middle housing that you need to take off and that will require you to take off this spindle here which is connected to um the, the pinion gears for the differential is basically that's why you have to take off this entire transmission and in order to take this off in order to take this housing off to send this piece here to the machine shop to, to machine out this hole as well as this hole right here but you don't need to do that anymore because basically what we found out, let's just get a bushing here and inside is a Teflon uh, bushing, PTFE line bushing that you just go in and you coat this with Loctite and just press this in and that's it. That is the step down bushing that you need to press in and makes the job very simple, very easy, very cost effective. And these things cost two or three bucks at McMaster car. So yeah, this is what I choose to go with and it sh sh everything should be fine once I allow the lock this Loctite to cure. And there's two options for the Loctite here. I actually have got both in hand. You could use either a 272 Loctite. This is semi-permanent, so if you want to ever go back to the Artronic setup, you would just uh, hit it with the torch to heat up the Loctite, and then you'll be able to extract that bushing. However, I, don't, I can't think of anyone wanting to do that. This one is actually permanent. This is 680. This is the uh, basically up the green, it's color is green and this is basically permanent over here. So I think I may use the 680 because I'm, I'm never gonna convert back to a Artronic on this car and should a future owner want to do that? Well, then they should just get a, an Artronic car and not buy this car that will be permanently a manual transmission car. So this trans housing has never been taken apart. And as you can see, these bolts here, these are guide bolts. You see how rusted they were. And that's why it took a little bit more effort for me to move these out because I had to use more of more the pry bar to take it out. So I'm definitely going to clean off all the rust on these bolts here, including there's some light rust here. So basically I'm what I need to do is I'll get some vinegar, soda, and ketchup and soak these in and hopefully that should get rid of all the surface rust that's on these bolts. And here we see the first set of bushings have been installed for this transmission case. So you can see here it's a step down bushing here. So it's now a 60 millimeter hole in both uh, openings here. So next step is to install the last conversion bushings uh, for the other side of the transmission. One cool thing that I'd like to point out, that I found out when I disassembled um, these forks is how different the manual and Artronic are in terms of the detente, meaning basically how when the shift 
rod moves back and forth, how does it st know when to stop? And basically the Artronic has these detente pins that go down from outside the transmission casing and fits right here. And as you shift back and forth, it travels between different detente points. Versus the manual, let's get the manual shift right, right here. There is no indentation here at all, meaning that the detente system is, uh, is fundamentally different. And what I found out is that the detentes are actually in the actual manual shifting housing itself. So there's a way for the shift for us to go back and forth and it will properly stop within the, the top bottom shifter, which is up here. So in order for me to uh, fully convert this to a manual, I would need to basically plug in these holes that the, the, that the detente pins uh, um, screw in, which is up top here. And there are actually five detente points, one, two, and three, four, five. And you can see I plugged some of the points up already with some oil drain plugs and the size for these oil drain plugs is an M14 by 1.5 thread pitch with a 10 millimeter shank length and this is very important which I found out if the shaft length is bigger uh, I will I will reach a point where I can't screw it anymore and you won't be able to have a tight fit on top of the casing. So basically, this is what you need to get. And I found these old dream plugs. This is the part number at AutoZone. So basically, what I need to do is I'm going to put a copper gasket around here and put some thread locker and then screw these in and plug up these five holes that I have on the Artronic here. So I'm halfway done. I managed to install the manual shift rods for the forks uh, 536 gear, as well as the forks for the three and fourth gear right here. And this one aligns on the input shaft right down here. The next step is to install the other shaft right here, the other shift rod right here for gears one and two and reverse gear. And let's go over to the bench to see what they look like. So this is the original shift rod for gear for the reverse gear and gears one and two. And this is the new shift rod right here. And one thing you notice, let me zoom in here, is that the original Artronic is actually shorter than this manual uh, shift rod. Now, why is that? Well, it's because in the manual version, there is a bump stop right here that is more that is shallower than the Artronic. The Artronic's bump stop right here is a little bit higher, approximately eight millimeters higher. So we have several options to, to be able to install this new shift rod, number one. Number one, yes, you can go and get a new rear cover for the manual version. Option number two is if you are a skilled machinist, you can go try to grind this bump stuff down eight millimeters or try to take this bump stuff off and figure out a way to uh, make sure that um, you get the appropriate bump stop that mirrors what the manual version has. Or you can just go in with an angle grinder and cut eight millimeters off right here. And it's perfectly fine because these shift, these holes, or for the reverse fork and they align perfectly so there's still a lot of meat left from this hole here all the way to 
this uh, line that I've marked here with some painter's tape. And this from here to here is about eight millimeters that I need to cut down here. So that is the modification that you need to do in order to completely install this manual shift rod. Okay, so after hitting the manual shift fork with an angle grinder, I managed to cut pretty close to the length of this Artronic shift rod here. And the next step is to install the shift rod and then along with the re reverse engagement collar here and then lock it down with some thread lock here and shift forks and rods have been installed in the transmission as you can see here these are the engagement collars right here and they are definitely thicker way thicker than the artronic ones and that's why you had to go into the transmission and change these out as you can see here cut off around eight millimeters here to be able to for this shift rod to be compatible with the artronic bump stop that will be installed in this way. One thing to note is that with these here, the, sh the reverse gear engagement is affixed by these two screws here. And then you, so you need to add some thread locker here. The two thread lockers here, and then a thread locker here. So these combined three screws hold all the shifting forks into place because this three to four uh, fork is freely moving as well as the one to two fork here it's freely moving as well so you're gonna need the five six fork as well as the reverse gear fork here affixed to the shaft here in order to be able to uh, make everything work here so what's next well gonna clean off this area right here with some brake cleaner and see if I can scrape off some more gasket here and then get ready to add some RTV anaerobic sealant to seal up uh, the transmission case. So I'm about finishing up installing the reverse gears for this transmission and I have torqued the collar nuts to 100 newton meters. And the last step is to make sure that these, as they spin, they don't uh, uns uh, unscrew themselves. So what you need to do is, let's see here, peen the size of this locking nut here into this gap right here. Once it's peened, it's not gonna uh, twist off as the um, shaft spin. So let's get a look here, I have one more side to peen and it's right here this is what it looks like unpeened and this is what it looks like if it's supposed to be peened in and what i do is i use a drift and i knock it down reverse gears have been installed these have been torqued down to 100 newton meters and these collar nuts have been peened so they will not be un twisting themselves as the infra shafts turn so we're good here as you can see here, this is the, right here, this is the shift rod, the manual shift fork that I had to cut and it looks, doesn't look bad at all. So it's nice and smooth. I sanded everything down and these are, these pins here have been installed with a drift. So everything's nice and locked in and behold, here is the final product. You're supposed to now have these manual, um, engagement forks that you can then use the manual shifter on top to go in and shift the gears manually now so everything is nice and tight gasket is has been applied all these nuts on the housing right here have been torqued and i need to wait about a day I'm gonna give it actually two days since it's Sunday and I won't be able to work on this transmission again until the next two, three days. So I'm gonna let the gasket fully cure before I can then start pouring the transmission fluid inside here, inside this housing. And then I could like start 
start installing the manual shifter on top here. One thing to note that I also need to install the rear cover here. However, I need to wait because there is an O-ring that's supposed to go here and I want to replace this with a new O-ring here. So I need to uh, go to the dealership and see if they have that O-ring in stock. I hope they do. Forgot to mention that it will also be a good time for me to clean the transmission filter as well. So it transmission filter is off the side of the casing right here. It's just held by one screw. Take this off and I just clean this off with some water, mild detergent. Some water and mild detergent. Once when I install it, I'm just gonna oil up this oil ring right here and then reinstall it. And then my transmission should be ready for new gear oil. So what we've done so far is that we've taken out this whole entire transmission casing in order to replace the manual shift rods and shift forks in the housing unit right here. So everything's been replaced right now. There were some, some things that I we had to manipulate and, and modify, such as cutting off eight millimeters off this manual transmission rod here because Due to the bump stop of the Archon rear cover. But everything's cut, it's sanded down, and it's nice and smooth, and everything is buttoned up and ready to go. Next steps are to pour the gear oil in, route the two shifter cables here, and connect it to the shifter unit, as well as route the clutch line that goes around down here. After that, we need to do some electrical wiring to wire the reverse backup light that is part of the shifting unit here, as well as the clutch uh, safety starter switch that we need to wire in to the ECU. From there, we will then go into VCDS to program the various computers to tell it that it is now a manual car versus an Artronic car. And then everything should be a okay, everything should start up.